Hello everyone, it's time for Dragon Ball Super episode 43 and thoughts on Dragon Ball Super, of course. So anyways, let's get started, shall we? And I will talk about the stupid rumor that's going around. Chances are it might not be a rumor, but still, I kind of don't like it. Well, maybe it's true. I'll talk about it at the end. Anyways, so we get Goku now is at home. The party has ended. Goku is at home and he's not eating as much as he usually does. Instead, he's eating half of what he eats and he's not feeling like he wants to eat. He doesn't feel it. And it's nice to see Gohan. I mean, Goten is there with Chi Chi that the how the how the home that they're in. I mean, yeah, you know how it is sometimes. It's like in a Simpsons or in everything else. It's like you get to see some of the characters, but you don't see the characters at all. They could actually have been like, oh, we can just have Chi Chi and Gohan. Goku, sorry, Chi Chi and Goku. And Goten is just nowhere to be found. But no, they added Goten in there. And I'm like, yes, that's a beautiful touch. Please, please don't lose that. So you have Goku mentioning his deaths. And he's like, yeah, I never felt like this before. And Chi Chi is worried about him. So we get to have a cut back of what happened previously because he didn't want to worry anyone, but now it's kind of a big deal. So Goku went shopping and Goku can, could not actually control his body. Apparently he, yeah, for some reason, his body started to act crazy, stopped in place. And then, yeah, some crazy stuff. And he landed in the freaking ground eventually. And he bumped his head. Yeah. A major bump in the head. And they try to figure out what to do. They can't go to the normal doctors. So they're like, let's go to King Kai. Go to King Kai. See what he says. So I do have to admit it was a nice touch of the homie thing. You know, I talked about it already, but still, it was nice to see that. So anyways, Goku teleports and he teleports to Vegeta's place, to freaking Boma's place. Oh, frick. And Boma's actually naked, but of course, she does have a towel. Yeah, I don't think she would actually walk naked. Yeah, I don't think she would do that. But anyways, she mentions the fact that Trunks actually has a sporting event. And Vegeta came in after hearing Boma saying, ah! and Boma apparently has a defense system and she has it already unlocked and about to shoot Goku. And go yeah, it's like, what the frig, man? And Goku says more than he should. He's like, yeah, I didn't notice that her breasts are sagging like previously. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. For those who like freaking Boma and don't want me to say crap, well, that happened in the freaking episode. I'm sorry. But still, yeah, he's mentioned stuff that he shouldn't, and he, t he teleports before anything else can happen. And, of course, Vegeta was pissed at that. Next, he goes to Krillin. Well, actually, Vegeta was more like, don't do it, don't do it, man. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, he teleports to Krillin's work. And I was kind of weird. Danny teleports to a rail, which I love that girl. I love that girl. I play Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi 2 on the Wii. And that was the person I played with. And I beat the guy with him who I was playing it with. So, yeah, I like her. She's awesome. She's freaking awesome. So she got seen. So I wonder if they're going to have to cast her now or they already cast her. They just have to find her again. I don't know. Well, anyways, we get to Kami's point. Kami's lookout and he's actually at the point of the bottom of it and he teleports one more time and finally goes to King Kai. King Kai actually checks him out and it turns out it's delayed onset Kai disorder. So because of he went recklessly with his Kai, it's actually fluctuating weirdly. And of course, it's most likely because of Kaioken times 10 Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. So because of what he did there, that's why things are going wonky and he's kind of a bit weakened right now. But King Kai wants him to rest. And he's saying if he continues to go all out, if he continues to be reckless, he will be weakened by that. Meaning that he will have a cap on how strong he can become. Meaning that Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan might be the end of the road for him. Or Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Kyle Ken times 10 is the is the most powerful moment he can get to, meaning that Vegeta can actually finally surpass them because of this little cap he found. Well, he hit, or should I say wall? 
But anyways, King Kai is still pissed about being dead. And we now get back to Chi-Chi, which Chi-Chi was waiting for Goku. And Goten was actually sleeping on her lap because he was waiting for, for Goku to come back too. Goku crash lands. I would figure that Goku at this point will actually says, come here, Cloud. Yeah, he would get his freaking yellow cloud and he uses that. And I know it's kind of like, oh, freak, but it's like, Dude, you can't fly. But instead, no, he continues to try to fly, and he crash lands into the freaking house. He crash lands in their house, and it crumbles, and Chi-Chi is pissed, and she's pissed even more. Oh, frick. So they have no choice but to go to Gohan's house. Meanwhile, Go Gohan and Videl are dining with a professor and his wife. Gohan gets the call, and it was Goku, of course, and apparently Gohan will actually get a position of being an assistant teacher to a professor. Wow. And the bad guys are lurking in the hallway, listening in. They overheard that Goku is ill. Chi-Chi is happy that... Yeah, she is very happy that finally a Super Saiyan or a Saiyan actually has a job and working hard. And... Yeah, she's also pissed about something, too. And it turns out, remember um, the episodes ago and the freaking thoughts? And I'm like, Chi-Chi spent 100 million zenny that freaking damn fast? Well, it was a freaking lie, which I'm happy. I'm happy about that. Apparently, she lied about it, so Gohan, Goku, sorry, Goku wouldn't actually slack off on work. She wants him to still work hard, even though they have a decent nest egg. Yeah, I mean, Chi-Chi, what the heck? You have a decent amount of money. If you learn how to actually use that money and invest in stuff, you don't have to work ever again. I know you're going to be pissed that Goku doesn't work, but it's like, but you got that money. It's like, frick. You got that money. Goku saved the world. Technically, he did what you think, hmm, because Kaba actually is a hero for hire. Technically, that's what just happened here. Goku saved the freaking world. And freaking Hercule paid for it. He paid him 100 million zenny. I'm like, technically, he already did do the hero for hire thing. It's just that it won't go any further than that. All right. Sorry about that. Ooh, but anyway, so she lied. She didn't spend it at all. She was thinking about Goten as well. So Goten and Pan, that was kind of cute to see that. Uncle and niece. That was nice. And oh, Piccolo. Pan actually likes Piccolo, and Piccolo's been taking good care of Pan. He knows a lot about Pan, about what she eats, what she likes, what she dislikes. That is awesome. That is awesome. That is so adorable. And also, Pan calls Piccolo Picoyo. And, of course, it's on screen, just in case those are like, I'll spell that. <laughs> so, yeah, Picoyo. And he leaves her for Goku and Chi-Chi and, and, of course, Goten. But then after thinking a little bit, he's like, never mind, I'm going to stay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, never mind, I'm going to stay. I'm like, where does Piccolo have to go? There's nowhere he can go now. What, go to Kami's Lookout? <laughs> yeah, there's nowhere for Piccolo actually going because he has nothing better to do. So anyways, Goku and Piccolo actually look at the sky, the night sky with Pan. And they talk, just the fact of how Goku's a little bit weakened. That Piccolo can take him now and <laughs> just all the other stuff. And little funny talks about how Pan could actually turn Super Saiyan. But anyways, Pan tries to pick up the stars, he tries to pick the stars out of the sky. And that was just a nice moment for all of them. So anyways, they're all asleep and wow, everyone has to share a same bed. Yeah, you have Goku, Chi-Chi and Goten sleeping in the same bed. Oh, wow. That's that's cramped. That's freaking damn cramped. So everyone's asleep, and the bad guys are on the prowl. They're actually at Gohan's place, and they're planning on doing something. I think they're planning on taking out Goku. So Pilaf is... Oh, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, they have a mech with them. The girl is honest. She wants to be honest now, has honest living with the dog, too, where they're actually like, we are good working at the freaking restaurant and we're able to get leftovers it's the good life and pig pilaf is like no no freaking damn no and he plots to use some lottery tickets to get goten and chi chi out of the way 
Piccolo, they're planning to do something about that so they can get Goku and defeat him and get rid of him once and for all. But anyways, it turns out that, like Piccolo said, someone has to keep an eye on Pan. Pan is now outside with the bad guys. And Piccolo is pissed as soon as he looks and sees that Pan is missing. The bad guys freak the freak out, and they're like, we're getting the freak out of here. So they get the freak out of there, and the little the girl actually decides to take Pan with them, and I'm like, what the frick? That's why they're running, you fool. That's why they're getting the freak out of there, and you're taking her with you? But anyways, Peel Off wants her to toss Pan out of the damn window. Oh, frick, and then, uh-oh, Pan is sad, crying, and then all of a sudden, dirty diaper. Oh, frick, yeah, it smells horrible. And for some reason, Pan headbutts the dog. Yeah, she headbutts him in the gut, and he kind of wanted to hurl, but luckily he was able to hold it in. Peel off wrecked the freaking robot, smashed one panel, and now it's total liftoff. Now instead of being a robot, it's actually a rocket going out into space. The girl prays to freaking God and says, God, you're going to take care of this kid. We know that. So, since we're taking care of the kid, why not take care of us, too? Because, come on, man, please. <laughs> so, that's what does her prayer. Goku and Piccolo are very worried about Pan. And Goku actually yells out Pan, and Pan hears her name. And all of a sudden, she starts powering up, broke the freaking robot shell. And, yeah, the robot shell is now a freaking mess. It's a, yeah, it's a mess. And she's now flying. And she's got her serious face on. It's like, holy frick. Yeah, she's like, she's flying. No one has to teach her how to fly. She already knows how to do it, which I'm like, what? But anyways, she tries to touch the stars again. Now it's cute. And she's having a ball, just flying around, enjoying herself. The bad guys are suffering because they're holding on to her, kind of like what happened with um, Bugs Bunny and Marvin the Martian. You remember that one when he went on the moon and they blew up the moon? And they're hanging on the freaking moon for dear life. Yeah, that's the same exact thing that's going on. Luckily for them, they were able to find a freaking tree to jump off. And they jumped off in the tree so they don't get noticed. And Pan actually flies back into the building or something like that. I don't know. The house. I have no idea how she actually becomes unnoticed that she can fly. No idea. But anyways, Gohan and Videl returns home. Pan is there, and Chi-Chi blabs about, yeah, we kind of misplaced her for a little bit, and apparently, Pan does that often, but inside the house. She never actually did it outside. And Pan actually now knows how to say Grandpa. That was nice. Aww. And (laughs) Piccolo thinks Pan can't fly. He's like, yeah, one of these days, nah, Pan won't be able to fly. And Gohan actually turned down the job offer. Because if he took the job offer, he won't actually see Pan as much as he wants to see her. So that's why he doesn't have a job. So there you go. So as for the next step, and people are just making rumors. I saw two people already talking about it. One person being a nutso who's like, Black Goku, Future Trunk Returns, Episode 43. I'm like, I know it's in Episode 43, man. It's freaking about Pan. Maybe they're looking for a far future. Maybe they're looking for Dragon Ball Super News. But me personally, I'm like, let's just see how it goes with it. I'd rather be surprised than actually know. Yeah, it's like, Frick, just shut up, people. Shut up. Don't don't say anything about anything new or future about free and Dragon Ball Super. Just don't, all right? Just don't. And as for those who really want to hear about it, go right ahead. Just leave me out of the loop. I don't want to know. As for Black Goku, what the Frick? I mean, Kaba, if Kaba was black, then I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But there is no such thing as Black Goku. Universe 6 version of Goku most likely is a freaking Saiyan. Most likely. If not, then I don't know. As for Trunks coming back, Future Trunks coming back, and that's what the next chapter is going to be about, well, that's going to be weird, but I'm glad to see Future Trunks. But technically, I would have actually have liked a spinoff series. we are actually get to see what Future Trunks did after... The Cell Saga ended. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see him return back in Dragon Ball Super. I'd rather not. I would prefer actually getting his own series, and hopefully they won't actually go crazy enough to be like, Namek has to big Dragon Balls. 
we'll go to Namek and we wish for all our friends back. And then there we go. We got it all over again. Which I'm like, no, no, no. We're just going to make it so that Trunks and everything. Maybe they go to the Dragon Balls. Maybe they wish for the world to be back to normal. But on the other hand, since they don't have technology anymore, it'll just be a nice thing to see the freaking civ- society rebuild. Maybe see how the Boo Saga happens. Maybe see how Beerus works out for that universe or that timeline. That would be kind of cool to see how that would play out. That is what I really want to see. But anyways, for right now, I've just saw the sneak peek. And the sneak peek is just that um, Goten and Trunks are stowaways. Because they went into Monaka's freaking truck. And now... Yeah, so, and now they're actually on another planet and Goku has to save them. And of course Goku is so, Yeah, they've got that crap going on. That's what's happening. So I don't know how far it's going to take to get to future drums. If it's going to take like 10 freaking episodes to get there, I'm like, you guys shouldn't even be saying crap. Right? The only way how it works is that if it's actually the next episode, yeah. If it's like two episodes, three episodes, kind of hint at it, which might be, but still, I would prefer actually seeing like a promo and then it's like, oh, frick, some future Trunks returns. And then you talk about it then. Yeah. Get people hyped up then, not get people hyped up. And it's like, uh, where is it? Uh, you guys said future Trunks return. You're all now in three episodes in of you guys promising. It's nowhere to be found. Uh, what the frick, man? But anyways, I'm going to end it here. Anyways, thank you for watching and stay tuned for another thoughts on Dragon Ball Super. Sorry for that rant. I'm out.